Hey, Dr. Z here, specialist in functional medicine, showing you how to rebuild your body and your mind. In this video, I will discuss the major physical cause of depression. I will also provide you with actionable steps you can take to immediately lift the heavy fog of depression and find yourself feeling happier and more hopeful again. I want to explain to you why antidepressant drugs don't work. Antidepressant drugs, such as the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, or SSRIs, work by blocking the reabsorption of serotonin by the nerve it was released from. This increases the level of serotonin within the nerve connection or the synapse between two nerves, allowing for improved neurological function. Now for some, antidepressants have improved the symptoms of depression, while others haven't gotten any symptomatic improvements at all. In fact, one third of all patients with depression fail to respond to conventional mind meds, and at least 20% of depressed patients are treatment resistant. So antidepressant drugs work for some and not others. The question is why? The reason is depression is not as simple as a deficit of a single neurotransmitter like serotonin. That's why drugs that work just on serotonin, the SSRIs, don't always work at eliminating symptoms of depression. Antidepressants or SSRIs don't treat all of the mechanisms involved in depressive conditions. And now let's talk about the number one physical cause of depression. Research is now showing that depression and its related symptoms is a chronic inflammatory disease caused by high levels of inflammation, low levels of dietary tryptophan, and low levels of serotonin. Knowing the mechanism involved with inflammation and depression will help you overcome it. This gets a little technical, so bear with me. Let's talk tryptophan. Tryptophan is an amino acid found in food that the body uses to make serotonin and the sleep hormone melatonin. Tryptophan becomes 5-HTP, 5-HTP becomes serotonin, and then on to melatonin. Now regarding tryptophan and serotonin, there are two enzymes that work on tryptophan which determines its fate. The two enzymes are tryptophan 2,3-dioxygenase and indolamine 2,3-dioxygenase. Now this said, this now brings us to the point where I show you the link between inflammation and depression. In the next few slides, I will show you the mechanism of how inflammation creates depression involving those two enzymes. Again, this gets a little technical, so please hang in there with me, as it will totally make sense to you when we get to the end of the explanation. Here is an illustration demonstrating how tryptophan becomes serotonin and an explanation of the role of the two enzymes, TDO and IDO, I mentioned earlier. Under normal circumstances, 5% of tryptophan becomes serotonin, while 95% of dietary tryptophan becomes a compound called kinurinine. Kinurinine becomes the B vitamin niacin, and it's involved in the immune response. And now TDO is responsible for turning the majority of tryptophan into kinurinine. However, when there is inflammation in the body, some of the tryptophan becomes a toxic compound that is linked to depression. But before I show you that, let me explain what inflammation is. Inflammation is an immune response from our white blood cells, our immune cells, in response to an injury and to attack germs. This is the body's way of healing an injury or fighting off infection. This inflammation is good. However, inflammation is not always helpful or friendly. A chronic low-grade inflammatory response destroys the balance in the body, making you more susceptible to aging and developing chronic disease, one being depression. In this illustration, white blood cells spit out inflammatory chemicals called cytokines. Cytokines are chemical messengers that have different effects on our immune response. When elevated, these compounds can cause disease. We're now at the point where I show you the link between inflammation and depression. Under normal conditions, 5% of tryptophan becomes serotonin and 95% becomes kinurinine. However, in states of inflammation, the enzyme IDEO, or indolamine 2,3-dioxygenase, becomes active, which then takes some of the tryptophan that is needed to make serotonin and turns it into a toxic compound called quinolinic acid. 
Quinolinic acid in the brain can hinder neurological function and even cause the death of neurons. In fact, researchers have found high levels of quinolinic acid in the brains of those with major depressive disorders. So, in states of inflammation, two things happen. There is less serotonin made for normal brain function, and there's an elevation of quinolinic acid. Both low serotonin and an elevation of quinolinic acid are major causes of depression. Based on the research, many people with depression have systemic inflammation that reduces serotonin in the brain and increases the level of quinolinic acid. This said, how do you know you have inflammation and what are the best tests for it? People with depression have increased levels of inflammatory cytokines. The good news is these inflammatory compounds can be tested for in the blood. When considering specific tests, have your healthcare provider test for interleukin-1, interleukin-6, tumor necrosis factor, C-reactive protein, and haptoglobin. Clinically, I see patients with depression show these elevated inflammatory markers. Some have them all show up, others have a few. If you have any of these inflammatory markers elevated, you have to ask yourself the question, why? In the next few slides, I will list the major reasons for inflammation and then provide you with actionable steps you can take to help reduce inflammation so you can start to feel better again. If inflammation is the driving force behind depression, what causes it? For one, increased gut permeability or leaky gut is a condition where the lining of the intestines become permeable, allowing unwanted bugs, proteins, and other undesirable molecules to pass from the intestines into the bloodstream. This causes the immune system to become active, causing systemic inflammation. Now, leaky gut can be caused by the overgrowth of bacteria, the protein gluten, and high cortisol from stress. Gluten, the protein found in certain grains and bread products, when eaten, interacts with specific bacteria in the gut, which causes the formation of a protein called zonulin. Zonulin causes the breakdown of the intestinal barrier, allowing for the passage of foreign particles into the bloodstream. This is a major cause of systemic inflammation. Now, high calorie, low nutrient dense packaged foods create abnormal immune responses and inflammation. The three most commonly consumed inflammatory foods include bread, dairy, and sugar. Yep, bread, dairy, and sugar all cause heightened immune responses and inflammation. Sorry to say, folks. Let's not forget about abnormal blood sugar regulation. If you have unmanaged high blood sugar, you will also have dysfunctional insulin control that will definitely create inflammation. Did you know body fat is a hormone producing organ? Yes, and body fat will produce those inflammatory compounds or cytokines that create systemic inflammation. And now that you know some of the factors that cause inflammation and how to test for it, what can you do to immediately reduce it? For one, start by eliminating foods known to cause major immune problems, including bread, dairy, and refined sugar. Yes, bread and grains with gluten, animal milk, and refined white sugars have to go. And get rid of unfermented soy products found in packaged foods and protein powders. Now, I really want to emphasize the elimination of gluten. Gluten, the protein found in certain grains, has been proven to cause leaky gut, immune dysfunctions, and systemic inflammation. Now, you may be thinking that gluten can cause celiac disease, and it does. Gluten is also implicated in countless autoimmune diseases, neurological diseases, and mood disorders. You have to eliminate dairy products as they contain inflammatory proteins that are known to cause inflammation. And of course, get rid of processed refined white sugar. Chronically, high blood sugar can create elevated insulin levels that lead to inflammation. Yeah, I'm sure right now you're asking, if I can't eat bread, dairy, or sugar, what do I eat? Now, I, I know this is brief, but think of these things. For one, eat five to six times a day. Eating a combination of plant-based foods, healthful protein sources, and good fats. In order for you to have proper brain function, you need steady blood sugar and neurotransmitter levels that can be balanced with healthful foods throughout the day. 
Now I'll be posting a video on how to eat for depression, so stay tuned for that. Consider stool testing for bacterial overgrowth and the protein zonulin. Bacterial overgrowth causes increased gut permeability or leaky gut that leads to systemic inflammation. Bacterial overgrowth or dysbiosis is caused by a poor diet, antibiotic use, and the use of proton pump inhibitors for the treatment of reflux. Now, depending on what's found in the gut, resolving bacterial overgrowth requires specific probiotics and herbs that balance bacteria and reduce inflammation. And as I stated before, zonulin is a protein produced by the interaction of certain bacteria in the gut and gluten. When you consume gluten-containing foods, zonulin is produced that causes the lining of the gut to become permeable, allowing unwanted particles to enter into the body. This causes the immune system to go crazy, leading to systemic inflammation. Now, reduce your body fat. Body fat is a hormone-producing organ that can cause inflammation. Similar to the inflammatory messengers or cytokines we discussed previously, body fat produces its own inflammatory compounds. These compounds can activate IDO and reduce serotonin for the brain. Exercise with periods of intensity. High intensity interval training involves exercising with periods of slow intensity followed by periods of high intensity. This type of exercising can be done on machines or without. High intensity training can also be done with weights. You decide what works best for you and there are endless examples on this of this type of exercise on the web. High intensity interval training has been shown to improve neurotransmitter levels including serotonin and it has been shown to reduce inflammation. Now it's also very important to get your vitamin D levels checked. Low vitamin D levels are a cause of inflammation leading to depression. When you get your bloods done, make sure your blood level is between 60 to 80 nanograms per milliliter and not the ridiculous and antiquated reference range of 30 nanograms. I'm telling you, if it's near 30 nanograms, it's way too low. If you hover around 30 in the blood, start taking roughly 4,000 international units per day until you get your bloods done again. You can always add more vitamin D or not after you've taken it for about four to six weeks and you see change in the blood work. Now reduce your omega-6 fatty acids or inflammatory fats. Garbage fats come from corn, soybeans, sunflower, cottonseed, and safflower oil. Increase your omega-3 fatty acids. These include extra virgin olive oil and avocado oil that can be used on your foods or to cook with. Eat foods high in omega-3s including deep water fish such as salmon, mackerel, sardines, and tuna as well as flax seeds and some nuts and for example walnuts. Now consider fish oil supplements that are high in EPA and DHA. The omega-3 fatty acids EPA and DHA are powerful anti-inflammatories. In fact, a Norwegian study of 22,000 participants revealed that those who regularly took cod liver oil, which is rich in omega-3 fatty acids, were about 30% less likely to have symptoms of depression than those who did not. And the longer the participants took fish oil, the less likely they were to have high levels of depression. Now consider taking vitamin C and other antioxidants including N-acetylcysteine, alpha-lipoic acid, and pycnogenol. Vitamin C is a cofactor required for the conversion of tryptophan into serotonin. And acetylcysteine, alpha-lipoic acid, and pycnogenol also act as powerful anti-inflammatories. Let's not forget B vitamins including B6 which are needed for the production of neurotransmitters. Besides getting tryptophan from the foods you eat, you can also get a supplemental tryptophan that is needed for the formation of serotonin. Now zinc is important for normal brain function and regulating inflammation. Zinc is abundant in pumpkin seeds and certainly in supplemental form, you decide. And last, magnesium in the form of magnesium glycinate protects the brain from the stress hormone cortisol that can damage the brain leading to depression. Depression is caused by a combination of genetic, biological, and psychological factors. The enzyme indolamine 2,3-dioxygenase, or IDO, is activated by the immune system through the process of inflammation. In states of inflammation, there is much less serotonin needed for proper brain function. 
dietary tryptophan under the influence of the immune system becomes the neurotoxic compound quinolinic acid. Quinolinic acid is a major cause of depression. Inflammation is caused by a poor diet, bacterial overgrowth, stress, and increased body fat. Get your vitamin D levels measured. You want the levels to be between 50 and 80 nanograms per milliliter in the blood. Eliminate inflammatory foods including bread, dairy, and processed sugar. Exercise with intensity and consider taking anti-inflammatory nutrients. If you suffer from depression and you follow these guidelines, I'm certain you will have that depressive fog lifted and find yourself feeling happier and more hopeful again. I hope this helps to rebuild your body and reframe your mind. I'll see you in the next video.